Cherry Creek Radio has been furnished a fee for the following program. The following program does not reflect the views and opinions of Cherry Creek Media. Good Saturday morning. This is Russ McClellan, operating partner and designated broker of Keller Williams Realty NCW and the host of Home Sweet Home Radio. I wanted to start today's broadcast with a heartfelt thank you from me to you. On this show, each and every Saturday morning, we explore a variety of real estate topics. We'll introduce fascinating people and their unique take on a variety of subjects. We'll bring on our Keller Williams real estate brokers and find out what makes them tick, mainly so you can get to know them as I do. I want you, our listeners, to know that without you, this show simply wouldn't be possible, and for that, I'm extremely grateful. Our brokerage now has brokers in almost every city in North Central Washington, and we are by far the fastest growing and the largest real estate company in our area, and we just think we're getting warmed up. I love to bring authenticity to the program. I'm not afraid to say what I feel and mean what I say. I hope you enjoy today's show, and thank you once again for making Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends a reality each and every Saturday morning. Welcome to another episode of Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends. Here's your host, Russ McClellan. Hey, good Saturday morning to you. This is Russ McClellan with Home Sweet Home. Hey, we're having a good time in the land of COVID. How about you? Man, when's this thing going to end, really? Like, does anybody really know anything about anything? About anything right now? Because all I know is 128 characters doesn't tell me a whole heck of a lot. And depending on which TV show or which cable news show or which podcast you want to listen to, the world's going in about 7,000 directions simultaneously. But the good news is the sun's shining, still breathing oxygen. I feel for the people that are suffering. Uh, You know, tough times don't last, tough people do hang in there. And uh, gosh, you know, our hearts are with you. So let's shop local. Let's do what we can, guys. All right. Hey, today I have an old friend and colleague and uh, guru. Uh, Good morning, Jay Witherby. Good morning, Russ. Nice. This is home sweet home for us, isn't it? It is, man. It's like a reunion of sorts. <laughs> I, I, I love the fact that when you get so old or you've been around so long, you're you're just like, it's just kind of a permanent part. And that's kind of how I feel about uh, you. And, and so we were talking off air about how many people have come and gone and passed away, sadly. But we've been around a while. Mm, yeah, I see. I think I jumped in the Chelan area about... The early 80s made my entrance into that, and I ran into you in the end of the 80s and early 90s, and we did some business together and still do. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's fun, Jay. Jay, from I'm, I'm going to think, uh, try to hit the dates, but I, I don't know any anymore what day of the week it is in the land of COVID or month. Um, but back in the, in the early days, you moved, where did you, originally were a sign company, positive sign company, yeah. and you had a business on the west side, didn't you? South King County, yeah. Right. They did really well over there. Back in those days, I learned that you could do business anywhere, not, wasn't Zoom days, right. just pre-Zoom days. They had a machine called the fax. Ah. And so I could do work in Chelan via my fax and my telephone, and people thought I was actually in South King County. Now they do with Zoom. Yeah, right now you can be in the Philippines and think you're in downtown Seattle or mm-hmm. wherever. And, and I remember when I uh, I started real estate, in fact, I just put it on my Facebook not that long ago, in 1989. So I think I met you right in there. Um, I graduated high school in 87. I don't know if I knew you in high school, but right after that, I got in real estate pretty early. I was going to Wenatchee Valley College, and you had moved to Chelan. And I remember starting up Frontline Real Estate um in the in the early 90s and i didn't have two cents uh to rub together and i think you loaned me you paid for a sign for me for 35 bucks that said frontline real estate had that apple logo and uh we took the market by storm i think i opened in the middle of an orchard in the middle of this cabin kicked off the cobwebs and it was a metal door so uh you you loaned me the money i probably still owe you 35 bucks i can't remember i'll look it up (laughs) Yeah, we went for it, man. And then it wasn't that long after that that I bought uh, from our old friend, Bernice McCauley, uh, R.I.P. She was an amazing lady at Lake Chelan Properties. I think I bought that in like the mid 98, maybe 96, 97, somewhere in there. Um, and then you went on from there. You did you did that for a long time and then you got into all. I mean, just tell me a little bit about what so people that don't know Jay Witherby from Chelan. uh 
Give us a little narrative of what you've been up to the last 30 years or so. Well, you know, I popped into Chelan in the early 80s and bought a piece of property through Bonnie Cannon. Remember oh, yeah. Bonnie, Bonnie and her, and her husband, Don? Yeah. Prior to that, he was a, a county or a P, or no, a port commissioner for a long time. Yeah. Bought a piece of property. They helped me buy it from, believe it or not, Mike Steele's mother, who's now our now our state representative, because Mike was born and his mom needed to buy a station wagon, so she sold me a little lot up in Chelan Hills for fifteen thousand dollars. It was a thousand dollars down and fifty bucks a month. Perfect. Well, and like I, I bought your sign. Yeah. By the way, I <laughs> sold that piece of property last November for the high six figures. Oh yeah. That, so it, it, it worked. Out, that one worked out okay for me. <laughs> yeah. So it then uh, uh, did the sign business for a long time. Did find that I, I've always found that you know investing a little bit in real estate is a pretty good idea. It seems like when we run out of stocks and bonds, somebody runs in the back room and hits the print button, and a whole bunch of more stocks and bonds come out. Well, they quit making land a few million years ago, mm -hmm. so it's, it's <laughs> they, they can't replicate it. So I've always felt that you should put a little bit of money in real estate, yeah. and did that for quite a while. Owned some businesses, several businesses in Chelan, real estate. You and I have exchanged properties before, you know. So and it, it's worked out okay for me. Yeah, yeah, and then you, you went from there. When did you get into the broadcasting side? That was just about 11 or 12 years ago when um, Steve Byquist retired from KOZI right. Radio, and they were looking for somebody who had a little bit of radio experience. And all I had was, you know, I jumped into politics for a while, but I'm now a recovering politician. <laughs> and so I did the 12-step program, and I'm doing very well on it. But I want to get into that because you were the you were a one-time or two-time mayor? One-time one mayor, mayor, county commissioner. And then I ran for county commission, and Doug England beat me. And uh -huh. by the way, Doug is a much better commissioner than I would have been, so... Uh, that that was a that was a pretty good loss. So I did all that, you know, in the chamber stuff and the Rotary president yep. and did all that stuff. You know, everything you do in a small community. Yeah, you've given back a ton of your time, a ton of volunteer time, and and I and I think you were uh, you were the narrative of, of second cup of coffee, which I think you uh, you added a certain flair to that, and you had the ability to you say you're, you're a recovering politician, but you had the ability to get your point. I think you always have straightforward person, straight shooter, yet not offend too many people. I mean, as we know, I mean you you can you can't not offend in today's world. I mean. Uh, everybody's upset about something at some point, but in the general scope, I thought you did a masterful job of just, you know, being direct without being a, uh, you know, softy, so to speak, but yet, uh, not offensive too too much. I mean, uh, it was a fun job. I mean, yeah. actually, it was the only job I've ever had. I went to work for Boeing in '77, quit in '79, and that was the last time I collected a paycheck until the radio. Right. And uh, you know that, that that happened right about the end of '08. And if you remember, I was so far in front of my skis in that '08 real estate market that that adjustment of '08 <laughs> was a bit painful. And when Cozy came to me and said, "Hey, would you like to go to work for Peanuts?" and I thought, well. That's more than I'm making today. I'll take yeah. that job. Yeah, I do remember 2008. I got hammered. Yeah. It was great. Yep. Probably more ways than one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've always, Russ, I, I can't learn from books. I just don't yeah. do very well at it. So I read about hot for a long time, but it wasn't until I burned myself that I really understood it. Same thing with the real estate market. You know, I knew that mm -hmm. markets go up and markets go down. But in 07 and 08, I just felt everything I touched was turning to gold. And that correction, because it didn't break me, made me better. Oh, yeah. I, I think that the humbling effect that life has, regardless of, uh, of adversity. I mean, I always say adversity breeds clarity if you let it. I mean, there are some people that like to repeat the, the same things over and over again and enjoy that pain. But I tell you, it's an interesting time right now. Um, let's let's kind of go back to the beginning and then you know what did you what did you think when what was your inspiration to move to Chelan from the west side I mean did you always know about Chelan no, coming I, my first trip to Chelan was in 1977 and I was staying over at what is Pleasant Beach now but at that time if you remember it was a it was a bunch of picker cabins mm -hmm. and you rented them for 20 bucks a night and I stayed there for one summer and looked across the lake over to Schland Hills, and there were like four lights on the hill. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what? This is where I want to live. And eventually I was able to make that happen and uh, committed to that $50 a month payment, which seemed like an awful lot of money at the time. But uh, that was in uh, in 82. And just, right. just never, you know, I, Seattle's a beautiful place. The best place to see it's in your rearview mirror. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey man, especially lately. I'm yeah. not sure what they're doing over there no, now. No, I'm not either. I mean, let's let's think about that. So let's think about Lake Chelan. I mean, you talked about finite amount of real estate. Uh, one of the things I always bring up is that we have a lot of supply constraints right now. And as we look at today's world compared to the, the early 80s, late 70s when you arrived and I was born in 69. My grandmother, Daisy Grimes, came to Manson on a covered wagon. She passed away at 101 years old about eight years ago and came on a covered wagon from Missouri. So, I mean, that's my dad's mother, right? And my dad lived to be 86, passed away in April, and he was born in a little house in Manson. My mom was a 1956 Apple Blossom Princess, and, and I did my K through 12 with uh, Manson School Districts and graduated in 87. But, you know, I... I, I bring all that up because I'm just thinking in just that short period of time between my grandmother to my father to me and you, how much change has happened and these supply constraints that that are so obvious to people in real estate. I mean, you think about zoning and topography and infrastructure and the fact that about 88% of land is owned by the, the government in one form or another in Chelan County. And then you relay the amount of demand that with the technology advancements, what I call forced adoption of stay at home work, uh, employers on the West side are figuring it out. Like, wow, if you don't drive five hours a day in traffic, you might get more work done. So you can work at home. Well, people like you saw in the seventies and early eighties, that was kind of an anomaly. That was a unique situation because you almost had to be self-employed or work for maybe a fruit company or the government. I mean, there wasn't really or be a farmer. I mean, there wasn't really a lot uh, of opportunity. And now what I see is an unlocking of millions of people. And when you add the supply constraints that we have, how do you see this playing out? Well, you know, I just made a big investment in East Wenatchee because I felt the same way about that. I, I just think that it's not only can you work from home, you come to Eastern Washington, Central Washington, you can work and play from home. It's the best yeah. of it's the best we have to offer. Yeah, I think that it's in it's interesting when you think about everywhere in the country. You know, Barbara Corcoran, the Shark Tank girl, she said at Good Morning America, there was a quote she said that she believes one third of Americans are moving out of the metropolitan area into the country. Well, when we come back, Jay, I'd like to talk about what do you think this is really going to do, um, the pluses and minuses of this, because I think there's always advantages and disadvantages of growth. And, uh, you know, there's some concerning things and there's some exciting things. So when we get back just a few minutes, we'll, uh, if you don't mind, we'll keep engaging in this kind of reminiscing conversation. Looking forward to it. All right. Back to you. Hi, this is Russ McClellan, operating partner and designated broker of Keller Williams Realty, North Central Washington. Hey, thanks for tuning into our show each and every Saturday morning. I wanted to share the fact that we've been in business now about a year and a half. We have over 50 real estate agents, and there's a reason for that. Mainly, it's relationship and culture. You know, sometimes people definitely look at the money and the commissions and the splits. But at the end of the day, it's about relationships, trust, that familial connection that you have at Keller Williams. That's what we strive to do, and that's how we look at our clients. We now have offices in Brewster, Chelan, and Wenatchee. We have agents in Wenatchee and East Wenatchee and Kashmir and Leavenworth, Chelan, Brewster. Really having a good time. So if you're interested in learning about why is Keller Williams Realty growing as fast as we've grown and have as many agents that are focused on their clients as we do, give us a call at 509-888-0038 or just stop by and see us at 1111 North Mission Street right here in Wenatchee. Hi, this is Russ McClellan, operating partner of Keller Williams. I want to thank you for supporting my radio show as we enter our third year of broadcasting. We are going to continue to provide an emphasis this year on real estate education by inviting our affiliate partners to share their knowledge and expertise, as well as discuss current real estate trends and topics with all of us. I'm also excited to introduce our Keller Williams brokers individually so you can get to know them as I do. Sincerely, thank you for supporting Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends. Call us anytime at 509-888-0038 or stop by our office at 1111 North Mission Street. You're listening to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends. And here's Russ. Hey, welcome back to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends. One of my good friends, Jay Witherby. How you doing, Jay? Doing great. Uh, doing thanks great. for hanging out with me. Uh, we're having a good time. In fact, this is our first video production of our radio show, and this will be the 69th show that we've done. And just talking about time, it just seems like... Uh, 
couple of days ago I started doing a radio show out of the blue and now it's been going on three years so you were uh, 10 years on the air and before that you were uh, or during that you were the mayor mayor before that Mayor before yeah. that and a business owner in Chelan before that so last segment we were just talking about growth you know and when you combine the demand which seems to be increasing at an astronomical rate now that the technology has allowing people to work from anywhere and here we have unlike a lot of places but everywhere in the country is feeling something similar but we are in one of the most uh desirable places in the country in the northwest and then you can't really if you're a tech person you can't really uh, every kid in the world probably knows what the space needle is with microsoft and amazon and so all of a sudden that city's uh grown like crazy and now we have a, a very distinct desert climate compared to the west side where we got those four seasons and that 300 days of sunshine, 8,000-foot mountain peaks, clean air, clean water. You can tell I've done this speech before. Mm. About 30-plus years of selling my hometown. So I'm a, I'm a little bit worried, man. I mean, as a real estate developer, which you are now, um, and as a real estate broker, owner, and developer myself, uh, you know, we have a push in 70 agents. But, boy, I kind of, I'm kind of afraid about what could happen to price? Is it going to be sustainable? Makes me a little nervous. I mean, we, we've talked, you and I have talked about yep. this as a business, as an investment in, in developing land right now. Um, what's, the, what's the future look like? Well, it's hard to say, but I know that there's a huge shift in housing to people are moving to vacation communities. And those are the folks who can, who can do that, either they're retirees or they're knowledge workers, the ones we're talking about, the Amazon folks, the, you know, uh, Microsoft, mm -hmm. those kinds of folks, Google, that, you know, they want to live and work from home. And so I see that happening here. Now, I did, you know, I've, I've read some that people think that that'll be helpful, like in the Seattle market, where maybe there will, homes will become more affordable because a lot of people want to get out of the Seattle market and they want to live and work and play in central Washington. Right. But I do, there, there is, there is a supply demand issue here. You, you know, way back you went to college you got your your economics degree it was pretty mm -hmm. simple supply and demand runs this program this is the oh that's the cloud over right. all of this and it's going to be tough yeah and the economic latitude or the delta between the economics of what you can do online i heard a an interesting fact i don't i guess it's a fact i mean first of all never listen to me because i probably am a salesman and not a scientist so let's get that disclaimer out but i heard that an average facebook employee is 29 years old right now and makes 240,000 a year on a w-2 I know personally we have we're pushing 70 real estate brokers in north central washington uh and we're seeing w-2s in the people in their 20s a combined income over half a million at their day jobs couples um it's hard to make that kind of money over here it's tough and so w when you look at the housing situation the cost of lumber going up like crazy because frankly if you think about the the macroeconomics like you, you mentioned at econ Econ 101 says, you know, if there's 100 million people theoretically moving from the metropolitan area and high rises to the country, we don't have that housing. And so the building companies, uh, the article I read was interesting, Jay, they, they stopped production because they remember 2008, 9, 10 also. And they, they thought that the zombie apocalypse called the coronavirus back four months, five months ago, we didn't know, right? That they would slow down production. So I heard there a billion, I read where there's a billion uh, board feet that they're, they're behind. And then all these people moving to these country, more suburbia country areas don't have houses. So the, the vertical construction demand is intense. What I'm concerned is, and I'm curious how you feel when rates are at zero, I mean, we're, we're doing deals. We just did a 15 year fixed, uh, I think Prime Lending did, one of our, our co-hosts here, um, Michael. 1.8%, 15-year fixed. 30-year uh, fixed are in the th you know, low twos, mid twos. Uh, what happens when they go back to five or six or seven? Which, for people who have been in real estate a long time, that's still good. <laughs> for people that are coming up now in their early 20s, five, six, seven percent feels like, you know, what the heck? How could I ever buy a house? So what do you feel is going to happen? What do, what do you think the end of the day is? and the right, you know, the right move. Interestingly, you know, the builders that I talk with and real estate agents like yourself and brokers that I talk with, a lot of these deals are cash. There is, there is, there is, there is no interest rate involved, yeah. but that's, but that affects, that's one segment, you know, of our society. But uh, those are the retirees and knowledge, the Facebook, Google, Google folks. What about the rest of us? Yeah. Because I'm one of those. I'm not, I, I can't, 
pay eight hundred thousand dollars cash for a house. I can't, you know, I I don't I don't drive a one hundred seventy five thousand dollar Porsche. I drive a two thousand ten F one fifty. It's got a couple of dings and dents in it, and I like mm-hmm. it that way. Mm-hmm. But me too. I know, <laughs> but you know, it's I, I don't have I don't have a solution. But we we can't just build custom homes for that segment of society you know we we have to keep focus as well that um if there's not someone there if, if i can't find someone to come over and take care of my lawn then i i guess i don't get a lawn or something i mean there's mm-hmm. we, everybody need everybody needs a home yeah you know as a when you were on second cup of coffee which people don't know what that program is it's on uh, uh, another radio station and it's a call-in program you were the host of that show for a long time and this polarizing scenario that we're feeling right now in politics always on an election year we feel it but especially now with uh, the woke movement and all the political unrest and so on um, over the years you know tourism was an issue right mm-hmm. and it's interesting because my dad's group those farmers from the original days they were the original obstructionists of growth but they were nothing in my opinion compared to what I'm seeing now, which I call the slice of heaven mentality. <laughs> like, I bought my condo, let's blow the tunnel. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> Boy, Russ, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh-huh. So here, here's, here was my belief when I was still in politics. Chelan, the Chelan Valley, was perfect on this date, okay? For me, it was June of, two, of 1983. For your dad, it was, you know, April of... 52. 52. Yeah. For some people, it is tomorrow, Right. And that's when Chelan was perfect, and that's when it should we should stop. That's when right. growth should stop. It all de- it's your per- it's, what, what was your perfect day? And they, they, you said yeah. oftentimes, you know, in the old days, it used to be what, what we really wanted to do was put a turnstile on this side of the tunnel, on the Chelan side of the tunnel, and have everybody come up and go around that turnstile, throw some money in, and head right back through the tunnel again. Right. Tourism. Yeah. And then they, they, we grew. Right. I mean, I've seen the same home in my career go for 350 and 1.3. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember when 350 grand on the lake was expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how that's possible, but it is. I feel pretty young, but it seems like I'm getting older. Um, so here's what, what's interesting to me. Affordable housing. I hear a lot of, and you're in government, so you understand that side of the coin. I don't. All I know is that they talk a good game at every level of politics about affordable housing and they accomplish nothing. And I don't, you know, I, I'm one of those guys, I, I like the idea, like they're doing that program in Chelan with the, their 200 plus thousand dollar townhomes. That's great, but you don't own the dirt. I mean, 200 plus thousand in my head, not, I mean, I get it. It's probably better than renting. It's kind of like buying a, a mobile home on a rented lot, though. I mean, that would be the closest comparison, and that's a good accomplishment. But what can, what I'm concerned with is between the lack of subcontractors, the lack of available land, the, the overregulation and overreach of the seven or eight government agencies, um, supply and demand problem, an economic diversification that is so vastly different from this side of the state to the other side of the state with an invasion, because that's probably the word, um, it's a complicated problem and I'm not saying I have the answer. I know this though, that our firm, we're getting into land use at a high level because I believe real estate brokers, uh, that's one area where we could maybe start to work on some regulations together. And there, there are some cool things happening, but supply and demand, right? I mean, if we can't figure out a more efficient way to build and a more efficient way to develop, and uh, I'd like to get into your development too. Um, I, I just see the price going up. You know, even if rates spike back up, because like you said, there's enough equity coming over the hill. You can sell your $1 million two-bedroom condo in downtown Seattle and come over with a bag of money. Um, how You're do you doing feel? it in groves. Yeah, every day. I've never seen it this, uh, I've never seen it like this. And I've been in it since 89. And it's concerning. Um, but here's what I don't like. And you probably dealt with these calls. I don't like it when people get upset at people for wanting to be where you, where you live. Mm. I mean, it is America, right? We we should be able to move in America wherever we want. Um, so my personal opinion is you you may not like the fact that we're growing. My dad didn't. I didn't. Mine was probably July of 87. That was a pretty good year. Water skiing. That was fun. That was a good time. I had a lot of hair back then. Much more aerodynamic now, though. So that's good. Um, so how do you feel about 
uh, that where people get PO'd at people for wanting to live in a town that's cool. Yeah, that's that. what I was talking about with Chelan was perfect. Chelan Valley was perfect this date. Same thing's happening in Wenatchee, East Wenatchee, Leavenworth. It was perfect on this particular date. Um, you know, there's no putting a toothpaste back in the tube, in case you're wondering. This is, this, is, this is reality, and like you, I don't know what the answer is, but I think that regulation and looking at land use regulation is, is a big part of it, and, uh, I, I, I don't, I, but I really, truly don't know what the answer is. Yeah, like you said, millions of years ago, we ran out of making dirt. Yep. So very, anytime you have a finite amount of supply and, and which seems to be an unlimited demand, and now with the opening of the technology world, you can work from anywhere, it's a challenge. So we're going to come back. I want to dive into some more reminiscing and some fun stuff. Uh, it's an interesting time in real estate, and I, and I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate you coming in. We'll be back in just a few minutes with Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends. Hi, this is Russ McClellan, operating partner with Keller Williams Realty and the host of this show, Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and Friends. I want to take just a minute to say a heartfelt thank you for your support and tuning into our show each and every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. I'm very proud to share that we are celebrating our 50th radio show this month and launching into our third consecutive year of this show, all thanks to you. I also want to thank all the amazing people that were kind enough to come on the show and share their stories, thoughts, fears, wisdom and experiences with all of us over the last two years, including my co-hosts and friends, Sharon Crockett and Michael Maher with Prime Lending. I personally have made some amazing friendships as a direct result of this radio show, and I couldn't be more grateful. As always, throw the phone in the drawer, be present, spend some time with your friends and loved ones, and make it a fantastic Saturday. Thanks again for your amazing support of Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and Friends. Hi, this is Russ McClellan, operating partner and designated broker of Keller Williams Realty, North Central Washington. Hey, thanks for tuning into our show each and every Saturday morning. I wanted to share the fact that we've been in business now about a year and a half. We have over 50 real estate agents, and there's a reason for that. Mainly, it's relationship and culture. You know, sometimes people definitely look at the money and the commissions and the splits. But at the end of the day, it's about relationships, trust, that familial connection that you have at Keller Williams. That's what we strive to do, and that's how we look at our clients. We now have offices in Brewster, Chelan, and Wenatchee. We have agents in Wenatchee and East Wenatchee and Kashmir and Leavenworth, Chelan, Brewster. Really having a good time. So if you're interested in learning about why is Keller Williams Realty growing as fast as we've grown and have as many agents that are focused on their clients as we do, give us a call at 509-888-0038. Or just stop by and see us at 1111 North Mission Street, right here in Wenatchee. You're tuned to Russ McClellan and Friends on the Real Estate Show, Home Sweet Home. Let's get back to Russ. Hey, welcome back to Home Sweet Home Radio with Russ McClellan and my friend Jay Witherby. Hi, Jay. Good morning again, Russ. Hey, we're having a good time talking about uh, craziness. Um, what are some of the fun, what, what are some, you know, in your history of being a mayor and being a business owner and... Uh, working at KOZI and all that for 10 years. Now you're real estate developing. You've always dabbled in real estate and always done pretty well, but we, we took our lumps in the recession, but you're back in it. You're doing a real estate development. Um, how's it going? That one's going really well, working with uh, Douglas County. I've found them thus far, Douglas County Transportation and Land Services, to be very good to deal with. They have their all their process. What we want to know when you're developing is you, you just want to know what the rules are. I don't even care what the rules are. Mm-hmm. I don't care at all. I just want you to tell me the rules so I can decide whether or not the project is worth doing and then don't move the cheese on me. And if you do that, I'm happy. Like, I, get, I mean, it sounds crazy. I truly don't care what the rules are. Just tell me what they are. Yeah, it's the lack of predictability that, that makes investors squeamish about even getting in the game. And because of that, we, run out, we don't have enough real estate to develop. That's one, what you just said to me is the single biggest problem in government. Because if I'm a developer from North Carolina and I look at the Northwest, or if I'm a developer right here in Wenatchee like yourself, and if, if you can't tell me the game plan and you tell me, to use your words, we're going to move the cheese, how am I supposed to, to determine my risk return? How am I supposed to determine my ROI, my rate of return, return on investment? Uh, it becomes very confusing. 
Now you found that Douglas County, and there's some good guys over there, great commissioners. Um, so it's always fun to see somebody like yourself take it on. Um, what's it going to end up being? You think? Uh, you know, we've got a. It's a small development, six acres. You know, 16 lots it happens to be adjacent to the trail. The trail's a huge draw for people. You right. know, the people want to be on it. There's very, very little uh, land left to develop between the two bridges. And, and on, the, on the Douglas County side and, and, of course, on the Chelan County side, there's, there's little, if any, at all. So it's kind of tough. But people, you know, people like that recreational side of things. That's part of the draw to the Chelan Valley. That's the draw to Leavenworth. That's the draw to Central Washington. You know, we've got some of the best, you know, natural beauty and mountains and rivers and creeks. There are snow, skiing. So people like that. that that's, that's a huge draw, big selling point. You know that. Yeah, and your timing is, is really good. I hope you're, I think you're going to do very, very well on it. Um, as we look back, what, what were some of the things in Chelan that, you, that stand out, like some of the people that, that we both knew, that, just good memories that you've had? You know, the, the really good people are gone, it seems like. I, mean, I, I know that I still have lots of friends in mm -hmm. Chelan, don't get me wrong, and you know, my wife's fourth generation Chelan Valley girl and, you know, parents are deep in the orchard business. That's what they've done, agriculture their whole lives and her un uncles and grandparents. Uh, but, you know, it's a changing world and, and that's okay. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we don't expect it to stay the same as much as we'd like to. That's not fair to the generation behind us. And so, like you said, they have, you know, the generation behind us and folks who live elsewhere have a uh, every bit of right to be here as we do. I used to tell people that when I was still involved in politics. I mean, I don't want to, you know, be the bearer of bad news, but the gentleman who moved here yesterday has the exact same rights as your fourth generation family. It's just yeah. the way it works. Yeah, and I think that's true. I mean, there is some good people. I think I think of Bernice. I think oh. she was a big mentor of mine. She forced me to buy her real estate company, literally. I was young and she's like, you're buying it. I said, I have no money. She goes, I don't care. You're buying it. <laughs> so <laughs> she, I did what she said. I was, uh, her niece was, you know, I served on city council with her, and uh, I was mayor when she was a city council member. And uh, when it, I remember I was mayor, and it was uh, sh her term was expiring as city council, and she said, Jay, I'm not going to run again. I said, come on, Bernice, we're going for a drive. I drove her to Wenatchee, down to the county auditor's office, and we signed her up to, for another term. So that's, that's, how you, that's, how you, that's how politics are done. Yeah, it's, it, it was, it's been an amazing run. Like, I got into real estate, like you said, before the fax machine was invented, which is a long time ago. But to see all through 9-11, Y2K, the Great Recession, which was a, a very humbling experience. Uh, but a very good one. You know, I think as I look back at, at now running a show with almost uh, pushing 70 real estate brokers in almost every city in North Central Washington from Leavenworth to Canada, um, it's been good because my goal is to share that with people. And, to you know, to me, I had to learn the hard way, too, that stuff doesn't mean much. You know, all, all that at the end of the day, to me personally, everybody's different and whatever toots your horn's good. But for me, it just wasn't when when I had all the stuff, I wasn't that happy. And what I like doing is helping people. And I think you're like that, too. You're a straight shooter that likes to help people. I think that's why not only was the paycheck important, but I think your addition to Rotary as president and all the things you've done to give back uh, to the community and help guide it with leadership that you should be commended. And I think it's uh, it's admirable. Um, that we had people like you and have people like you and, and like Michael Steele and so many other people and Doug England that has served. And now we have a new race coming up. I mean, it never ends. Like you mm. said, this little hamster on a wheel program mm. isn't, un and we're not going to stop it. Right. What do you think? What do you think about the differences now that you've, you've moved down right to East Wenatchee? And, uh, you know, for me, it was the right move. Uh, you know, I, theoretically I was going to retire and not work any longer. And mm -hmm. it was funny because <laughs> people who knew me, friends and relatives are saying, well, what's Jay going to do when you move to Wenatchee? Jennifer, my wife, still works. She's the executive director of the Washington Apple Education Foundation. Yeah, so she spent though. like 20 years being Jay's wife. Now, <laughs> now I'm Jennifer's husband. You know, she's this year, you know, she was the um, uh, Apple Blossom, you know, Apple mm -hmm. Citizen of the Year this year, and she gets all these Amazing awards lady. and rewards. And so now Jay is Jennifer's yeah, how'd you talk her into getting love, loving you? Really? I have no idea. It's kind of weird. But she found this neat little place she wanted to live in East Wenatchee so she could commute on her bicycle to work, and she does that now. Wow. And uh, I was going to just, I don't know, I thought I was going to just 
you know, read or something, but, you know, I couldn't sit still. And then I started buying some more real estate. And, but I, looking back, I can tell you this much. Every piece of property I've ever owned, and I've owned a few, you know, personal homes, some condos, rentals, commercial property. I wish I owned every bit of it right now, Russ. Oh, man. I'm telling you, people, if, if, you're, if you're not in the real estate market and if you're young and you're wondering if you should be, the answer is yes. And never sell anything you don't have to. And even if you're going to make a bunch of money and turn it into a bunch more money, if, if I had every piece of real estate I ever owned, Russ, uh, I would not be dissatisfied. And I'm not, but I would be, it would not have been a bad move. No, that's very true. And what I tell people in this world of what I see happening, and I predict we're going to be busy for quite a while. Um, a guy told me once, because I said, hey, Seattle, everybody must be leaving Seattle. I had dinner with him at Duke's and on Lake Union about a month ago. And he said, he looked at me, and all he does is mortgages in downtown Seattle. He lives by Amazon's headquarters in a high rise, has a place on Vashon, has a sailboat, and he loves the lifestyle, but he has a place on Lake Chelan, too. And he goes, Russ, think about this. The world's a big place, and Seattle's a little city. Because in my head, coming from a big fish little pond growing up, you know, 22 kids in my senior class, I thought, uh, you know, I've always had kind of a smaller vision, I guess, relative to some that are more worldly. I'm more countyly. I know where any at's at, right? So guys like that, and I think to myself, well, man, why would you live on that side of the mountains if you could live on this side? Man, we're going to get all these people. I bet the real estate market's going to soften. And he just said, no, he doesn't think so. He, it might, he said, but... It's a big world, and the Northwest is pretty nice, and Seattle's a little city. So, and his point was, there's people coming from everywhere to there, and then from there they'll come here, just kind of like California, back in the day went north, and now California's heading to. You know, it's a crazy time, man. Mm -hmm. It's a strange, strange time. And I tell my brokers, tell your buyers to just pay the price. If it's over five grand, ten grand, when you can get money at two percent, two and a half percent, I would just buy it. And what we're, we're, we're seeing people have to learn that valuable lesson through not getting deals. And I'm concerned if you keep thinking that you have to get that 20% off or 10% off an asking price, the market's going to keep appreciating. And if interest rates click back up, you might find yourself in double jeopardy a year from now. I wish you would have bought that one that you didn't get over five, 10 grand. That's, that's my theory, especially in that three to $500,000 mark, like you said. I mean, you get above that, there's a little more supply. But boy, anything in that three fifty dollars range, it's tough. Which it's, is almost a starter home in today's world. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's a, weird, it's a weird experience out there. But my advice, just pull the trigger. Like, get in the game. It's not too late. Uh, I think we always feel like, man, if I would have gotten a game yesterday or a year ago or 10 years ago, but to your point, if you're in the mood and you have the means, jump. <laughs> Be creative. Make it happen. Again, call a real estate broker. I mean, interview some people. I tell people all the time. I mean, there's a difference. It's like in any industry. We're not all built the same, right? Like, I mean, there's good and bad in every industry. And so I want people that are interviewing uh, me. I want them to interview other people. I want, yeah, ask me some tough questions. Ask your real estate broker some tough questions. If they, if they, if they just kind of say, uh, my strategy is the three P's. I don't know if you know what that is, but that's where you uh, place the sign in the yard, put it in the MLS and pray somebody else sells it. <laughs> <laughs> if that's their answer to marketing strategy, yeah, come talk to us. We have a different strategy <laughs> than that. Uh, anything else, Jay? As I appreciate you, man, coming in on uh, Saturday, having a good time with me. It's, it's been fun reminiscing. Yeah. And the, uh, the future is bright, very bright. Yep. The goal is always this, you know, just have a good time. The world's going to keep spinning on its axis. Everything's going to be okay. Take a big, deep breath once in a while. And uh, next thing you know, you've been around a while. Yeah. It happens. Here I You're am. You're looking good. <laughs> Here I am. All right, thanks for uh, coming down. We'll be back with Prime Lending and Michael Maher in just a few minutes. Hey, this is Russ McClellan. I want to say thank you for the last two and a half years. You know, we started our real estate company, Keller Williams Realty, North Central Washington, in the spring of 2018. We've grown to be the largest real estate company in North Central Washington, and there's a reason for that. 
We attract people that want to keep the vast majority of the money they earn because they deserve it. We attract people that know that Keller Williams is the most advanced education and training real estate company and the largest real estate franchise system on the planet. We're in approximately 55 countries with approximately 170,000 agents with the most advanced technology in a world that is driven by the digital age that there is in real estate. We also, if that's not enough, profit share at 49% above a predictable expense line monthly. If you're interested in learning more about Keller Williams Realty NCW, give us a call today at 509-888-0038 and let's talk real estate. Have a great day. Hi, this is Russ McClellan, operating partner of Keller Williams. I want to thank you for supporting my radio show as we enter our third year of broadcasting. We are going to continue to provide an emphasis this year on real estate education by inviting our affiliate partners to share their knowledge and expertise, as well as discuss current real estate trends and topics with all of us. I'm also excited to introduce our Keller Williams brokers individually so you can get to know them as I do. Sincerely, thank you for supporting Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends. Call us anytime at 509-888-0038 or stop by our office at 1111 North Mission Street. Hi, this is Russ McClellan, operating partner and designated broker of Keller Williams Realty, North Central Washington. Hey, thanks for tuning into our show each and every Saturday morning. I wanted to share the fact that we've been in business now about a year and a half. We have over 50 real estate agents, and there's a reason for that. Mainly, it's relationship and culture. You know, sometimes people definitely look at the money and the commissions and the splits. But at the end of the day, it's about relationships, trust, that familial connection that you have at Keller Williams. That's what we strive to do, and that's how we look at our clients. We now have offices in Brewster, Chelan, and Wenatchee. We have agents in Wenatchee and East Wenatchee and Kashmir and Leavenworth, Chelan, Brewster. Really having a good time. So if you're interested in learning about why is Keller Williams Realty growing as fast as we've grown and have as many agents that are focused on their clients as we do, give us a call at 509-888-0038. Or just stop by and see us at 1111 North Mission Street, right here in Wenatchee. You're listening to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends. And here's Russ. Hey, welcome back to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends. I'm now on the phone in the land of COVID with my man, Michael Maher at Prime Lending. He always uh, comes in on our fourth segment and we talk about lending, credit, enhancement loans, debt to income ratios, you name it, credit counseling, uh, pre-qualifications. How you doing, Michael? Good. How you doing, Russ? Oh, great, great, great. Man, Jay Witherby, he's a stud. Known him a long time. I, I, uh, a lot of memories with that guy. He said it's been, it was neat to have him in studio and we're having a good time. So what I want to do with you, Michael, is where are we? Kind of check in with, within the land of COVID virus and credit. What's going on? Yeah, so rates are still holding steady. So now's an excellent time to, you know, if you haven't already, explore the refinance option, depending on how long you're going to be in the home. Um, that could be a great option to help shave some monthly, some uh, some money off your monthly payment, and then you know maybe pull some equity out if you're trying to do some renovation. Um, just a great time to at least explore and ask the question because we don't know how long these rates are going to stick around for. So, you know, make hay while you can, and and then you know hopefully it's a benefit to you. But I've been getting a lot of questions lately on credit Um, and the way I like to kind of view credit is it's more of an art than a science there is some stuff that works well that um, we coach people on to help get scores up and there's some kind of secrets to the trade that we know but credit in itself is you know small little things can make a big difference Um, but basically there's three tiers of credit you have your lowest which is like credit cards which anybody can get Um, You have your second tier, which is things like installment loans. So whether that be a car loan, trailer loan, ATV loan, that kind of thing, which you need a little bit more um, paperwork, sometimes a pay stub and and some, you know, basically verifying a little bit of income to qualify for those. And then the third tier is your mortgage credit, which takes a broad approach and takes a very grand view of your entire credit portfolio or sorry, your your entire credit um, profile and gives you a score based on that. And the important thing to know about these tiers is that Credit Karma, um, some of these other monitoring services, while they provide a lot of value and can tell you kind of where your credit is at, it's not the end all be all. And I've seen some 
scores come back of, you know, a hundred points or more difference. Now that doesn't happen a ton, but it can because credit karma typically is going to monitor those lower two tiers, not as much as a mortgage company that would monitor that third one. Um, so it's just important to note that while you're out shopping and if you think your credit score is higher, get, you know, get an opinion, go and actually find, get pre-approved. First off, you wouldn't go to the store without your wallet. It's the same kind of thing. You wouldn't shop for a house, especially in today's competitive market without first getting pre-approved and knowing your budget. And on top of that, if you work with someone like us, we can tell you exactly what you might need to do to get your scores up if they come back lower on, say, a, one of those credit monitoring services. Right. So when you're when you're doing your pre-approval letters for our buyers, and we talked about we talked about that a lot, where you really try to put yourself in the pole position and make your offer as strong as possible. And when you're in a competitive world, that's a seller's market, essentially lots of times we're competing against other offers. So when you're doing your pre-approvals, how much uh, difference is it to do the pre-approval based on the subject to verification of income and employment uh, and appraisal versus an underwritten approval? Where, where are you in that process? If somebody said, Hey, I have, I want, I want to get underwritten approval. Do you have that ability to do that, Michael? Yeah, absolutely. And it's important to do that because things change. Um, I just had this happen recently on a client who's, and this is where sometimes approvals can come and go. And it's about working with a team that can kind of call an audible at any moment and still get the job done. So basically we had a client that, um, had a, a score that was above a 720 and it was a longer closing. I think it was about five or six months because it was a new construction. So the home was being built. Well, credit reports are typically only good for about 120 days and then we have to repull. So we repulled, but before we did, I checked all, I had gotten his score up first off um, from our initial pre-approval. So it was above a, of a 720. And all of a sudden, before we pulled, I said, okay, let's check the balances, make sure we're not going to get any surprises. All his balances were less, and we re-pulled, and his credit score actually dropped about five or six points below 720, and it was no longer approved based on the underwriting, of the automated underwriting system. So we had to call an audible, and we got it all figured out and dialed in and closed, but it's very important to get that underwriting approval, but that doesn't mean things can't change. So when things like that happen, it's good to just have someone in your court that can go to bat for you and just think outside the box. I think that's the most important thing. Um, That doesn't happen very often. In this case, they were really trying to squeeze the maximum amount that they could out of this particular pre-approval, and they were in a very unique situation. So that doesn't usually happen, but it can sometimes, and that's where just going from, say, a 720 down to a 717 can change that because credit's based on 20 point tiers. You go from 600 to 620, 640, all the way up to 800. So every time you enter a new 20 point tier, it actually can help on your interest rate, your mortgage insurance, all sorts of stuff. So that's where it can make quite a bit of a difference to get those credit scores up. Yeah. So is the old adage, no credit, bad credit? No, I actually have someone right now in contract that has no scores whatsoever, and they're approved and buying a house. So that's a myth. Yep, it's 100% a myth. Now, there's some extra work that goes involved, that's involved in that, um, but it's definitely not a, um, it's not a no. You, you just make sure you have, you know, you meet the Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac requirements, and you can 100% buy a house with no credit score whatsoever. Yeah, that's good to know because there is a lot of people that are cash basis out there, and especially if they're first-time home buyers, they may or may not have a score depending on their history. What about uh, yeah. what's the timeline? If I said, hey, if I have a buyer who wants to get underwritten approval, we want to make the strongest offer we can for them when we when we dive into that competitive arena. How long do you need to get the verifications to get underwritten approval once they make the application? If they can get me all the information, it can be. 24 to 48 hours with and un- I can have them dialed in through the under it writing process. Yep. And, and that would include verifications or is that a little longer? Yeah, no, that includes verifications of employment. Those are 
even more so important right now because a lot of hours and things are fluctuating. So those are kind of a staple at this point in any pre-approval that we're getting, unless they're typically salary. But hourly employees, it's very important in this COVID era that we're in um, because, you know, if someone went from 40 hours a week to 32 hours a week, we need to know that before they're outright in offers um, so that we know exactly that they are 100% approved. Right. Well, if you want to, well, I'm thinking about it. I'm going to get your number out there. So if you are interested in figuring out where you're at, and trust me, there's a lot of people paying rent right now that could be buying a home and they don't know it. The other thing that, you know, talking about myths, I mean, how many times, Michael, have you, uh, before I give your number, how many times have you had somebody say, well, my bank turned me down? Oh, oh countless. Yeah. And, and sometimes it's uh, not the banker's fault because maybe that particular bank only had a couple of programs and maybe you didn't fit into that cookie cutter box. Well, what you do, you have a, a whole host of opportunities in different programs, don't you, Michael? Yeah, definitely. From zero down to low down payments to jumbo products to enhancement or renovation loans, construction, um, all sorts of stuff. And if, to be honest, if we don't have it, I know people that do, um, whether that's getting HELOCs and just all sorts of things that fall in the realm of, of mortgages and home loans. Um, we're a great resource to reach out to. And like I said, if we don't have the answer, I'll get it for you. Yeah, you do. And I've seen you do it. HELOC, by the way, for people that don't know what that means, it's an acronym for home equity line of credit. So quite often you tap your like primary mortgage, if you have a bunch of equity, that might be a way to go for some people. And I've seen you do it. Um, so it's not not just a sales pitch. I mean, it's legit. That's what I love uh, uh, love about you and Sharon Crockett and Prime Lending. You're all about the consumer. You're really doing a good job for your client. So if you want to get a hold of Michael, I'm going to put your number out there, Mike. It's a four two five seven six zero eight eight two four. I'll say it again: four two five. Seven six zero eight eight two four. Got a four two five number because you once upon a time were one of those dudes on the west side of the mountains, but you actually live on this side of the mountains. Exactly. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and it's a pain to change your number, but you're actually uh, you have a home in Inyat. You're often uh, you're available just about anywhere and everywhere, um, and you're a good guy. I mean, I think that's the key, right? When you're in work with somebody, there's more to it. Um, than just X's and O's. And so often with so many people, you become a statistic or you become just another customer and not, not a friend. I mean, what I've seen with your relationships, you, uh, you kind of tend to follow what I've done for a long time. And that is many of my clients become my friends. Um, after we met and we just used real estate as a vehicle to develop that relationship and uh it's, it's a good time and because you're you're here to stay and you're here to help people and i also exactly. can tell you i've you know we just did some more last week where you called a, an audible an adjustment they made some phone calls and you collaborate with people within your organization and and lo and behold it's amazing what you can do if you stir the soup um so i admire what's going on i know uh, it's a strange time and every seems like every month we think this will be the last month of COVID, but I don't know. Time will tell, yeah, but you know, it continues to drag on. It does, but you're, you're getting the job done and it, man, is there a serious invasion? So I appreciate you calling in and, uh, stay safe out there, buddy. Yeah, you too. Keep, uh, and if you have any questions, call Michael, he'll give you some credit counseling at any time. So confidentially. All right. Well, thanks for tuning into the show. As always, you know, tough times don't last. Tough people do. Throw that phone in the drawer. Say hi to your friends and family. Get outside. Get some uh, sunshine. Breathe some oxygen. The world's going to keep spinning, people. We will get through this. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great Saturday. The preceding program is sponsored in part by Keller Williams Prime Lending and Frontline Real Estate. More complete coverage, more breaking stories here. News Radio 560, KPQ1S.